Oh. Oh, yeah. God, look at that shit. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today I've got a very special surprise for you. A knife that I never thought I'd be able to get here on my channel, let alone two. We're talking about the VC Edge Interface. Now, these are both custom-made knives with a lot more to them than even I expected. And as I started to do more research, and as I started talking to the maker, Jason, it really made me realize how insane these knives really are. Now, a lot of people are going to want to focus on the extreme lightweight of this knife. And while that is certainly a major selling point for them, it's not what I want to harp on. We will talk about it, we will do comparisons, and we will weigh them. But what I want to talk about is just how exceptional and wildly different these knives really are. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to break this up into a few sections. So uh, right after we get into the tabletop portion, I'm going to give you all the specs and everything that you need to know because this really is a knife that very few people have gotten their hands on, so you will need to know the specs on this. And I'm going to come, come right out of the gate from there and talk about what I think of the knife, what I like, what I don't like. And then that way you guys, you've heard the review portion, you've heard the opinion portion, and you can make up your own mind if this is the kind of knife for you. Then the rest of the video, I'm going to spend talking about how unbelievably technically difficult it is to achieve what he's done here. We've seen a lot of really great knives come out this year with really wild technological, or technical, I should say, achievements. Uh, I always go back to the Winterblade Factor because that was like the big wow knife of the year, right? It, it did so many things differently well, with magnets and no detent balls and all the crazy shit that was associated with it. We've seen a lot of really crazy stuff. Now, while these aren't new for this year, they do go back a couple of years, they're so rarely seen out in the wild that I think that you're going to be very interested to see exactly how he puts this together, how he crafts this, what he's doing to make all of this a solid working knife. Because when you pick it up, the first time I touched it, I went... This feels like it's, a, it's, it's made out of balsa wood. And that was the closest description I could really come off with. It does. It's so lightweight. It feels like it's going to be delicate and flimsy. It feels like balsa wood because about 90% of this knife is carbon fiber. You know, we've seen a lot of knives with carbon fiber scales or even uh, carbon fiber entire integral frames, which I'm going to be showing one of those very shortly as well from Brian Ty. But this, most of this knife, including the blade, is carbon fiber. And while that does make it extraordinarily lightweight, there are a lot of other things to focus on, like how insanely difficult it was to make these a reality. So I'm not going to spend much more time here on the intro. I want to ask you again, please do uh, like and subscribe. If you like the video, if you like the content I'm putting out, clicking like does make a big difference when it comes to YouTube algorithms and how many people see the videos. The more subscribers I get, the more YouTube will push these videos out there and allow people to see all the crazy custom knives that are out there in the world and get a new experience. And I'm going to be doing a push this year for 100,000 subscribers. And when I reach that, 
I'm going to do something very, very special. I haven't decided exactly what yet, but I can promise you this. It's something that you'll have never seen before. So let's get those subscriber numbers up. Let's get more of these videos out there for people to really see the crazy cool shit that's out there in the market that they may not otherwise see. Holy shit, boys and girls, this is insane. I am so excited to finally get the chance to come out here and make this video. And finally, honestly, I've gotten the chance for myself to touch these, to hold these, to flip them, to play with them. I even carried this one for a short part of the day. And I got to tell you, truly, unlike anything else that exists anywhere in the world, Super excited to bring these out to you. And I got to give a huge thanks to my good buddy, Dirk Werning. Go over to his YouTube channel and watch the videos that he puts out. He's one of the few YouTube reviewers that I watch almost everything that he uploads. Both of these knives belong to him. I believe he got this one first and he loved it so much that he had Jason do something incredibly wild and make this variation for him. This is this is absurdly expensive if you're not used to buying high-end custom knives. Even for those that buy a lot of custom knives, that might be well out of your price range, but he did it because he understood how incredible these knives are. So let's get into this. As I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to give you all the specs out of the gate. I'm going to tell you my thoughts out of the gate. I'm going to give you all the things that you need to know to make an informed decision, whether you may or may not enjoy having one of these in your collection, or not based on the comparisons that you typically draw between what you like and what I like. And then we're going to get a little bit technical. I'm going to show you some of the insides of the knife, how they're made, the some of the unbelievable amount of processes that go into making these knives and hopefully you'll understand what these really are because I had not gotten a full grasp myself until I saw what Jason was doing with my own eyes and I went oh man there's way more involved in this knife way more than I had any clue of so uh, once again these are the VC Edge interface the base price, one like this, a and I, you don't want to call it basic, but the basic variation um, is $1,100. Now, they used to be $850. Prices have gone up. All material costs have gone up in the past year or so, as we all know, uh, post-COVID. So the prices are going up on these, so keep that in mind. Base price is $1,100. I believe this was somewhere around $2,500 or $2,800. I would assume now with uh, the price increases to go into a full dress like this would put you uh, far in excess of 3000 But um, either way, they're high-end priced because they're a high-end knife, and we will get into that. These are made uh, by one individual. His name is Jason Van Camp. 
Uh, he's a fairly young guy, and I got to tell you, he's absolutely brilliant. I will be talking more about him as an individual and a maker uh, after we get the specs out of the way, because I think it's going to be very important for you to understand where he comes from and what his goals were and what he did to make these knives. I want to make it very clear right now that there is a pre-order coming up on the next batch of these. This is purely coincidental that uh, I asked Dirk to borrow these to review them and, and to satisfy my own curiosity that when I reached out to Jason, he's like, by the way, I'm getting ready to do another pre-order. Um, actually, I think he normally does drops. This might be the first time he's doing an actual pre-order. Uh, either way, if you want to get one of these, it's just by pure happenstance that I'm doing this video right before he's doing a pre-order. So if you're looking to get one, his next pre-order will be October 12th of 2022. So you want to keep an eye on his Instagram because um, it says that date is not 100% locked in, but it's right around there. And then you'll have the date and the time and what to do. You'll, you'll know all that stuff if you follow his Instagram for VC Edge. So please do that if you want to get your hands on one of the... Oh my God, this is insanity. All right. Specs, as I promised. So we're going to put that one right there. And we'll put this one right there. And I hope I could get all the specs and everything to fit in frame because there's a lot going on here. So we'll see how that works out. Okay, first of all, this is a carbon fiber frame lock made with carbon fiber and titanium. Obviously, the second one here is carbon fiber and Timascus. Your overall length is 8.45 inches, just a tick under 8.5 inches. Perfect size. Blade length, 3.6 inches. The blade on the standard variations are going to be M390. And I think he's going to be experimenting with a few other steels. He's running that M390 at 62 to 63 Rockwell. I will show you an image later on showing you that he also does his own heat treat. So I don't want to hear anything from the one person in the peanut gallery about M390 and this and that. He's doing his own heat treat and, and verifying those numbers. Um, and this version is obviously in Dama Steel. Uh, let's see here. The blade bodies are done in unidirectional carbon fiber, uh, as is the frame. This one we'll get into because you've got unidirectional carbon fiber, you have end cut carbon fiber, damage steel. There's a whole bunch going on on that knife. There's a lot more than when you first see it. There's a lot more going on there. Um, and then he does a uh, hand rub satin on his steel. The thickness of the blade, at, and we're going to call it the blade body because uh, the blade body is what's carbon fiber, the blade is what's steel. The thickness of the blade body is 164 thou. Uh, thickness behind the edge, get this shit. Are you ready for this? Four to nine thousandths of an inch. That is so unbelievably thin. You're getting into chef's knife territory there, or very, very close to it. Um, 004 to 009, really think about how thin that edge is. It's crazy. Um, and he is making his own uh, multi-row bearings with uh, ceramic balls, titanium cages, and they're riding on ceramic thrust washers. Ceramic thrust washers with titanium cages and ceramic multi-row bearings. Insanity. Handle is uh, just under a half an inch thick. Handle material, as I mentioned before, is carbon fiber and titanium, or in this case, uh, Timascus. Hardened steel insert on the lock and uh, also on the components that he's laying into the blade body for uh, the, the blade stops and everything. That's all hardened steel. Hardware is titanium that he is uh, custom anodizing. The weight, 1.6 ounces. 1.6 ounces. That's crazy as shit. And believe it or not, that pocket clip is reversible. I really want you to understand how lightweight this knife is. Okay. We're going to show you some uh, comparisons here. All right, here we go. One, well, this one is 1.6. I believe they're both identical. Yes, they're both 1.6 ounces, okay? So here is a comparable sized titanium frame lock. My custom uh, Plunkett Knives 
XL warning. We go from 1.6 ounces to 4.8. Woo! Again, 1.6. Let's get into a knife that one of its primary reasons for existence is being lightweight. The Avian Knives Atlas. Go from 1.6 ounces to 2.5. Sizes are fairly comparable. This is even smaller. That's your difference between an old titanium frame lock and a carbon fiber with titanium frame lock. Let's do this again. 1.6 ounces. Here is a Brian Tie tie down that is a carbon fiber integral. So the entire frame is carbon fiber. 1.6 ounces, 4 ounces. And last but not least, let's give it a comparison against a really nice small EDC that a lot of us would carry every single day and be perfectly happy because it's so lightweight. 1.6 ounces versus the Mula at 3.6. This little boy right here is two ounces heavier than that. Tell me if this is not absurd. And the action is incredible. Realize you have almost no weight to this blade. And it takes only a little shaky shake to get that to drop all the way. The same action on both. That one's not quite as smooth, but still very, very smooth. His detent strength is light and very, very crisp. So you get a perfect flip every single time. I got to tell you right now, even though when you first pick it up, it really fucks with your head and you're like, man, is this thing made of balsa wood? Is this one of those little rubber band airplanes that I used to have? When okay, no, nah, I'm, I'm a lot older than a lot of my audience is now. Um, we had these little rubber, rubber band airplanes that were made of balsa wood and it had a red propeller and you would twist it around and all it would do was it was it'd wind up this, this long rubber band and then you would let it go and it would crash and break within five minutes of owning it but it was so lightweight you it felt so delicate now while on this one with the windows that are cut out i wouldn't go standing on this because these these uh bars in between the windows uh do get rather thin come on i know you could do a close-up come on oh are you gonna mess with me now okay Come on. Okay, I really want to get tight in here. I guess that's as tight as my camera is going to let me get today. There we go. Durr. Those are very, very thin, precariously thin. Now, this is not something he offers as a standard thing. This was just made for Dirk. Um, it was more of an experiment than anything else. So, yeah, I wouldn't go standing on that. However... When you get into the standard variation, very, very little flex. Remember, this is carbon fiber. Uh, it's going to be every bit as strong as steel, but significantly lighter in weight. So titanium would flex about as much as this carbon fiber would. So there's no delicacy to it. There's no reason to think, oh, this is going to break and this is... I have to baby this thing. Absolutely not. Okay, let's get back focused down here. By the way, those that are concerned that this slipped uh, that that slipped out of my hand, this is vinyl. This is not actually granite. It just looks like rock. So don't don't freak out. All right. So we've got the specs out of the way. I'm showing you a couple little tiny things. What do I think of it? Before we get into all the technical stuff and I start showing you how this thing is made, I got to tell you, when I, when I first saw Jason posting about these, I've been following him since pretty much the beginning. When I first saw him posting, I'm like, oh man, these things are just insane. But 
man, being all carbon fiber, is that going to be too lightweight? Am I going to like that at all? And I even had reached out. I had sent him a message a couple years back now. When I, when I first started, I don't even want to say when I first started making knives, but when um, I was feeling comfortable working with more exotic materials, I had reached out and I'm like, dude, can you make me a couple of blades? I would really love to, uh, to work with this because I didn't understand how these were made. And he's like, no, I'm not really going to be offering uh, blades uh, as, as a material that I sell to knife makers. It's, it's really just going to be kept to my knives. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, if you ever change your mind, please let me know. Um, because I thought that he had some way of making a composite blade, um, in a fashion where you could just sit there and grind this like a normal knife and I could make a cool fixed blade and I could throw some uh, scales on there. And it's really not quite like that. And again, I will be diving deep into that. I would look at that, that Timascus inlay in the flipper tab, man. How crazy is this shit? So I've been following him for a while and I really wasn't sure exactly what to think because this really is the kind of knife that you have to hold, you have to touch, you have to experience for yourself. Because I've bought a couple of knives that were smaller, that were uh, a lot of carbon fiber. Um, the last one was, uh, was a Marfion Custom Mini Matrix. And I didn't like it because it was too lightweight. It felt really, really weird, and I couldn't get past it, and I sold it a few days after I bought it. This, I thought, was going to strike me much the same way. And I'll be honest with you, when I first opened the box, I went, oh, man, yeah, that reminds me of that. I, I don't know. And then I started playing with it, and I started gaining a real appreciation for how this was made. That's something interesting. Let me uh, let me show that to you real quick. So you know you know I have just carbon fiber with just steel going off of it. It is coming all the way up and around. Look how crazy this is. Oh. So my thoughts are if I wanted to carry something uber lightweight but I didn't want to limit the size of knife that I was carrying. Like you guys know, I, I love my Vero Engineering uh, Mini Synapse. For when I want to carry a lightweight knife, that's one of my favorites, or Jerry Mo and Mongoose. But then you're going a lot smaller. Here I can carry something that is unrealistically lightweight. This is the most lightweight knife I have ever handled in a decade of reviewing knives. And it's a 3.6 inch blade. There's no sacrificing here. And again, you would think with a blade that weighs next to nothing by itself, it can't have a really good action. It does. It drops shut smoothly. And like I said before, his detent strength is flawless. Listen to that detent break. Listen to this one break. That one's a little bit louder. It's absolutely insane. And I realize I've said insane probably 20 times and you could probably start making a fucking drinking game out of it at this point, but it is. I have no other word to properly describe how incredible these really feel. They're slim, but they don't feel too skinny. They fit the hand so well. Everything is rounded, perfectly dehorned. There is not a sharp edge on anything except for the stupidly sharp edge on the steel. Everything feels great. The pocket clip is so short that it falls back here. There's no hot spot. Not that you're really going to be doing, a, you know, eight hours of hard cutting with this thing all day, but grip down on it and there's no hot spot. Everything feels perfect and ergonomic. It's just 
It's made to be carried every single day. It's made to the point where I don't ha- understand how Dirk carries anything else. And to give up both of these, he let uh, Alex over at the Watch and Cut channel um, do a, a brilliant review on this one. So he had that one out. Then he sent me this. They were both going at the same time. I've had these both for about two weeks, mainly because it was really, really, really difficult for me to photograph these. I have no problem admitting that. I can man up. My first two hours of photo sessions were a complete waste. I, I could not get the knives to show. You couldn't see the detail. Everything was too dark. And it took me till today doing the secondary photo shoot to get it right. So this this man has been without both of these knives for at least two weeks. That one for at least a month. Oh my God, I cannot wait to get these back in the mail to him. Okay, I lie. I, I, I really want to keep playing with one of these for a while. But I really want to get these back to him because I can't imagine how much he misses them. So for me, this is a 1,000% surefire winner. And one of the most brilliantly made knives I've ever had a chance to handle. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about how technical these knives really are. Because there is a tremendous amount going into them. There's going to be a redesign coming very shortly um, where basically all you're going to see is carbon fiber and then just the titanium lock bar. You're not going to see all this back here. So the way he's doing his backspacer and the lock side, he has further refined. So if you're like, well, I don't really care for this, this whole thing here. It just looks too bolted on. That's fine. That is going to be gone. You're just basically going to be seeing a lock bar like you would on any frame lock. And oh my God, I almost sliced my finger open just by gently touching it against the edge. All right, that's just downright fucking dangerous. Which, you know what? A knife should be. That's exactly what it is. Um, I promised you I would show you this close-up before I get into the crazy technical stuff. Because I want you to see what he's done here for this blade. There's the unidirectional carbon fiber body. An inlay into that with the end cut carbon fiber, which uh, we have referred to as blackwood carbon fiber. Which is what this entire frame is made out of. Notice it's a different carbon fiber than the standard unidirectional. This is, by the way, is the pattern that will come out when you slightly radius unidirectional carbon fiber. You'll get kind of this, this cool wave pool look. And he's using that end cut, end, cut, end cut blackwood carbon fiber all the way through the frame and then giving you the unidirectional here, then going into the damasteel. I mean, there is so much going on in this one knife. I just noticed that top swedge. Is the swedge on here? Yeah, okay, he does a swedge on there as well. I can't stop knocking him around because you barely touch it and it, it was to fly across the room. Look at all the pocketing it's been done in the in the Timascus, in the lock. Even in the carbon fiber on the back side of the frame. That's insanity. Okay, so how is he achieving this? Why? Why is this such a feat of engineering? Jason was a manufacturing engineer for one of the major aerospace companies in uh, SoCal. Uh, he's also an FAA certified airframe and power plant mechanic. So this is somebody that's worked with especially carbon fiber and titanium, but a lot of crazy materials and done a lot of machine work. He got into, into, just, uh, into CNC machining in 2014 and basically, all he wanted to do was, uh, being a knife collector himself, he's been carrying knives pretty much his entire life since he was old enough to have a knife. He wanted to start taking and modifying knives. We know a lot of knife modders out there, knife pimpers as we like to call them. And he kind of wanted to start doing that because he never really quite found, you know, that perfect knife, that knife that he would buy. And it was 100% everything that he ever wanted. There'd be a little tweak here, a little thing there that he wished was a little bit different. So he wanted to just start modifying his own stuff. The next thing you know, he just decides to go face first into knife making and doing his own designs. He made the first interface prototypes back in 2019. Guys, that's only been just about three years. That's, that's how long he's been making knives. 
and he's already doing stuff like this. Now, he said his main goal really wasn't the lightweight, that he's wanted a product um, that, as it was further and further refined, got lighter weight over time. But the whole thing was he wanted to make something that wasn't on the market yet, that was the perfect EDC knife for him, where he went, this is the right size, this is the right feel, this is the right weight, this is the right um, cutting geometry, the whole works. So he designed the interface to be that. This is, if this was just a standard titanium frame lock, we would call this a pretty basic overall design, right? But it would feel good, it would do exactly what we want it to do. But by the way that he's made this, he's made this a complete standout. It's unlike anything else that you'll ever see. And yes, I'm very well aware Warren Thomas was doing these integrated carbon fiber and steel blades. This is not the same. This is something on a whole other level. That's why I was saying I really didn't understand until... I saw him making them. Then I really understood what he was doing. And here's what I mean. Let's take a, a, a look at a few screenshots I've got here showing you what he's doing. So basically, what we're calling the blade body. That is the carbon fiber blade. Okay? You might be thinking to yourself, well, that little tiny sliver of steel I see poking out of there is that going to hold up? Is that going to fall out of there? Is it going to get loose and jiggle? Is it glued in there? What the hell? How is he friggin' doing this? Here's exactly how. He's taken these big pieces of carbon fiber, big beautiful sheets of what looked to be already flawless carbon fiber, and machining them down to create two halves. And he's laying, so in those two halves, he's got basically, he's building these posts in there. And he's dropping in a piece of steel that he's machining to fit that very, very specific area. There's a whole bunch of math involved there to make all those pieces mate together. Um, when he, when I've seen him snap them together, they drop on only in one position and snap in place. The tolerances are aerospace grade tolerances. There is no margin for error at all. It literally snaps in. And then he can sandwich these pieces together. And those posts that he's made that go through the mating holes in the steel blade keep it together. It doesn't wiggle. It doesn't jiggle. It's not your high school uh, prom date. It doesn't wiggle. It doesn't jiggle. It's not going to fall out of there. Nothing is glued. Everything is machined to perfect tolerances to snap and fit together. And then, once all of that is fit, he can literally leave it dry fit like that and it's done. Obviously, he doesn't. He has a special epoxy resin that he's custom mixing that he uses to bond everything, to give it a permanent bond. There is no taking this blade apart. Once he has dry fit everything, made sure everything is fitting the way that it needs to fit, no gaps, no craziness going on, then he forms that epoxy bond. That bonds it together permanently. Once he's done that, he could take the whole thing and then he machines the bevels. He does the bevel cutting on his fourth axis CNC, which is incredible when you look at how perfectly ground, we'll use the term ground, this really is with the primary bevel and with the swedges, which it's really hard to see the swedges because it's all carbon fiber. And then a whole bunch of handwork back and forth between all these processes. Cleaning up all the outer edges here because there's going to be epoxy coming out all through there. Then he's going to go back and hand sand this and hand sand it and bring that finish in the carbon fiber perfect. Bring that finish in the steel to where he wants it perfectly. 
which is even more difficult on this Dama steel because it's got to be done to a high polish and then etched. So he's doing all this, finishing it off by hand, and then applying an utterly ridiculous edge to these things. And it's seamless. Remember, this is an inlay. So this is a different carbon fiber than this. When we look at this, when I say seamless, you can't tell that this is a piece and this is a piece brought together, sandwiching the steel inside. The, the, the difference between the carbon fiber and steel is almost completely imperceptible. Fuck, I almost did it again. Do I have any? Okay, that was, that was close. It is almost imperceptible. I would not suggest you close your eyes and do that, but if you were closing, you closed your eyes and did this, you would not know where the carbon fiber ends and the steel begins. Then he's doing the inlay to show his maker's mark and the blade steel, which he's got on here as well. the way he makes the frame, the way he makes the pocket clip, the way he makes the blade, there are so many steps involved. When I first saw him doing these at 850 or 880 or whatever it was, I thought, that's got to be really hard to do for that low of a price. With what I thought I understood of his work, you got to realize that, yes, while I am a knife maker, I'm a handmade knife maker. I don't even have a manual mill. Everything I do, I do by hand and on a grinder and machines like that, drill presses and stuff. I don't have a manual mill. I don't have a, a obviously don't have a CNC, don't know how to program, don't know how to do any of that stuff. So as I'm talking to you about this and showing this to you, I can only explain it to, to my limited knowledge watching my friends that have done this stuff and then seeing what Jason has done. I don't fully get 100% of all the different processes that are involved, all the different end mills that he's using. There, there was one setup I watched him do. He had six, I think it was six, different uh, end mills set up to do one after the other, after the other, after the other. To put, I think that was for the pocket clip, but just to do one thing or one section, I should say. Multiple processes for one section. Everything on here is cut and machined and then machined some more and then hand finished and then cleaned up and then hand fit together and then repeat the process for the blade, the three components of each blade. And then do the same thing because he's making his own bearings. I mean, obviously not the balls themselves, but he's buying the ceramic balls he is making his own titanium cages, writing on these ceramic uh, washers. All this stuff is coming out of his head. He's making his lock insert. He's making his lock interface. He's making his uh, blade stop half moon. He's doing, because there's, there's an insert of hardened steel that has to lay in the carbon fiber blade. There's so much that he had to think of, and I'm sure quite a lot of trial and error as well, that I went, how is he, even with my limited knowledge of what he was doing at the time, how is he doing these for 800 and something dollars? And now that I've seen many of the things that he's doing, he's still not showing 100% of what he does. I look at it and go, even at the new price of 1100 I don't understand how he's doing it for 1100 and actually paying himself labor enough to make a living to justify making them. Obviously he is, he's not a dumb guy. But I look at it and go, oh my God, I would never want to make a knife this complex that took this many steps and then steps that you have to go back over and do over and over and over and over, machining the same area over and over, then going back by hand and cleaning it up over and over and over. And then to do the final finish I don't ever want to make a knife that makes me have to work that hard and that long on one single knife. At that point, I would get one knife done a month. And I love making knives. 
I love the process. I love watching it come to life. I especially love when it's done and I get to polish it up, final cleaning, play with it, do a cut test and send it out the door. But even somebody that enjoys doing that, I don't want to work as hard as Jason does. This is crazy. But what he's done is not only created a beautifully engineered complex knife that is beyond lightweight, but he has satisfied all of the basics that need to be satisfied in order to make a good knife of any kind. He's made it extraordinarily sharp, stupid as sharp. He has perfected the action. He has perfected this detent. Again, it's not like this crazy hard detent that you gotta rip. No, it's a light but perfectly crisp detent. The kind of detent that you would see in a three, four, five thousand dollar handmade custom knife from Legends. And he's been doing this for three years, guys. I mean, I can barely, barely touch that flipper tab. And it always goes to full lock. People want to toss around that phrase, grail. Oh, this is my grail knife. That's my grail knife. They could be talking about a $200 Benchmade. No, it's not a grail. It is currently made. It is available in mass production. It may be expensive to you depending on your income. That's fine. I get that part of it. This is a grail. It's very seldom you're going to get the opportunity to buy one because he only makes a few. And it is so complex that you have to wrap your mind around how he's making it. And yeah, it's expensive. And I can guarantee you, whenever Dirk goes to knife meetups with other knife dudes, or he goes to even some of the biggest shows, I guarantee you, the majority of the people that ask him to pull a knife out of his pocket to see what he's carrying don't even know what this is because they've never seen one. Maybe they've seen a picture, but they've never seen one in person. And he may, if, if he went to Blade Show Atlanta, where there are hundreds of thousands of us there, he may bump into a handful of guys that own one of these. That makes this a grail. It is nearly impossible to procure due to limited status, how difficult it is to make, and the cost. All those things wrapped up into one. And this one here, that's a one of one. Not another one exists like this, at least not yet. And it is magnificent. So I make you guys a promise right now. I have way too much going on in my life. I'm killing myself getting back into the shop and getting back into working after my injuries. And now I'm getting ready to move halfway across the country. So this is not exactly the time that old Jimbo's spending a shit ton on knives. But I promise you right now, before the end of next year, I will have one of these in my collection. I must own one. I have to. After handling it, after experiencing what this is, and there are a lot of knives that I get excited about. Only a few I really get excited about. There are very few that I get this excited about. I am thoroughly impressed with everything that has gone into making this knife. And even if I didn't know anything about how it was made, if I didn't see a single picture, a single video, nobody told me, I would be impressed with how it feels. I'd be racking my brain all day long trying to figure out how this blade is fucking carbon fiber and steel. And I'd feel this detent and I would feel this lock up and I would feel this overall action and go, I have to own one of these. And now knowing what goes into it, or at least mostly what goes into it, there's still a lot of mystery to me. I have to. So I'm going to figure out a way. I may have to sell, sell a body part, sell an organ. There's a black market out there. That's what the dark web is for. Ooh. All right. I need to stop now before I just squirt everywhere. Thank you guys for joining me as always. 
It's been a great pleasure bringing these knives out to you. Dirk, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me play with these. Everybody, please go give him a follow. Watch his reviews. He is one of the absolute nicest and most honest guys you will ever, ever come across in this community. And as far as reviewers go, man, you want to see somebody tear apart a knife if it ain't, if it ain't great? He will beat the living shit out of it. He will tell you every little thing. So if Dirk likes it, it's good. Dirk likes these a lot. And they're really good. I'm out of here for now, guys. Thank you for joining me as always. And I'll catch you on the next video.